It's the new Subaru Impreza WRX. And just like you, I haven't quite made up my mind about it either. So let's take a look around the new WRX and figure out if it's a yes, a no, or maybe. The first big change is under the bonnet. This is a 2.4 litre four-cylinder turbocharged engine making 202 kilowatts and 350 newton meters of torque. Very similar figures to the previous model, but the way the power comes in, the way the torque is delivered, it feels like it's a little bit more torquey and a little bit more powerful and just easier to live with. It's also apparently a lot more tunable. Impressors have always been polarizing and this one is no different. Think of the bug eye, the blob eye, the snake eye or whatever else they called it. But this one over here has got these sharp angular lines that stretch all the way across the back. And I do quite like the front over here. It's got some fake air dams over there and a lot of plastic in the front. Of course, it's got a big bulge over there. But along the side is where the controversy starts. It's got these dimpled arches here that have functional air ducts but I'm not sure if I like the black, non-color-coded skirting and arches. I think they should have just left this color-coded. Now, if you thought the front was polarizing, wait till you see the back. Compared to the standard Impreza, which we don't get in South Africa, this one is a few centimeters wider thanks to these arches over here. You've also got the back bumper, which some have said looks like a nappy on the back of the car. I wouldn't be so harsh, but it's also an acquired taste. What I do like are these lights at the back here. And according to Subaru, the inside of those lights is supposed to look like lava. Kind of cool. The interior is a lot less controversial with a traditional looking Japanese-esque sort of dashboard. You've got the analog dials on the dash, which are intentional. They didn't want to clutter with new technology in front of the driver. You've also got this little small screen with the information that used to sit on top in the old model. But on this one, you've got this big 11.6 inch display, which is fairly easy and quick to use. It's got volume knobs where you want them. It's got buttons where you need them and the rest is controlled by the software. There are a few functions like the heated seats, climate control and the driving modes that I would have liked to just reach over and push a button on, but those aren't deal breakers at the end of the day. There are two models available. The auto goes for 859 and the manual goes for 759. That's a hundred thousand rand difference between the two. Very strange, but you do get a host of safety tech on this version. Now, I was going to try and memorize all the safety features, but instead I just decided to pull over and read it out. So, you get five driving mode, rear automatic emergency braking. That's pretty awesome. Of course, the incredible eyesight package, pre-collision braking, pre-collision throttle management, adaptive cruise control, lead vehicle alert, lane departure, etc., 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 making this arguably one of the safest cars on the road today. So let's start in the suburbs where most cars like these spend most of their time. The steering is incredibly sharp on this car. It feels very, very pointy. The brakes have so, so much feel. And the gearbox on this one is the 8-speed CVT. But this one is Subaru's performance transmission. Depending on which mode you're in, it changes and shifts up either smoothly, like it is now in this suburban setting, or if you put it in the high performance sport plus mode, you get a gearbox that feels very similar to a good DSG or PDK gearbox. It's the fastest, most responsive CVT gearbox on the market now. So be sure to test drive it first before you put it in the same box with the rest of those nasty CVTs. <laughs> The 
But the piece that has this song, and that really is me just trying to sound fancy, is this car's incredible, incredible cornering ability. Yeah, those engineers at uh, Subaru and Subaru Technica International certainly do know what they're doing. If you are a big WRX enthusiast and you've grown up, then this car makes sense. If you're thinking that this is a GC8 or whatever the code is for one of the older ones, it's not. The direction that the company is going in these days is completely different. And this is a different car to any of the WRXs that came before it. Much more mature, but still very, very good at those fundamentals.